Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how we can create a totally custom 3D Fusion title in DaVinci Resolve 16. So when I say Fusion, what I really mean is over on the Fusion tab, you're able to create special effects in 3D using a bunch of nodes that tie together to create the effects you're looking for. So one node might be text, adding in shape, particle systems, so on and so forth, and then you can merge them all together and render them to a media out. So in order to create a totally blank template for us to edit, we first have to go back over to the Edit tab, and then in the Effects Library, which you can find in the top left-hand corner, go down to the Toolbox and Effects. And here you'll see a option called Fusion Composition. So this is basically a completely blank clip that you can edit in the Fusion tab to create your 3D effects. So I'm going to drop this into the timeline wherever I want that title to be. If we go over where it is in the video timeline, you'll notice that you get nothing but a black screen. It's completely empty, and that's what we want to start with. So next we're going to go over to the Fusion tab at the bottom in Resolve 16. That's the fourth one with the magic wand and the sparkles. In here you will see one node. That is the media output node. So whatever effects we create in the Fusion editor, we want to, in the end, output to media out one, and that will allow the effect to render uh, when we export our video. So in order to create a simple title effect, we're going to want to click on the text 3D component. You can see that in the toolbar above nodes, there's a lot of common components that you can add to this nodes window with one single click. So I'm gonna start with a text 3D, and if you wanna be able to preview one of your nodes, and see how they look at that step during this process as they all connect together. You can actually hover over a node and there'll be two black dots underneath the node. So you can take that node and have it output to the preview windows up here, the left view and the right view. So if I left click over here for text 3D on the left view, that means that the text 3D node is going to preview up here in the left view. So we can do something like put in some text here. So under style text, I'm going to call it title tutorial. And you can see that the text now appears in 3D space. So next I might want to take the font and change that to one I prefer. So Babis Noe is a pretty good title font. And now to take this 3D text and get it to the media out, we're going to need a couple more nodes. So at a minimum, you will need a render 3D node which will take this 3D space and output it to a image frame that can be sent to the media out, essentially. So if I connect the render 3D to both the text 3D node and the media out node, we can see that the text from the 3D space is now essentially uh, a 2D frame that can be rendered in your video. And we can also see exactly how the text is fitting the output frame. So with this size and this amount of characters, uh, we can see that it's actually getting cut off on the left and right sides. So that's something we might want to fix in a minute here. Now, if you want any additional elements for your 3D title, then you're going to need, at a minimum, a merge 3D node. So if I have the text 3D node selected and I go up to the toolbar and click Merge 3D, that'll put a merge 3D node between the 3D renderer and the 3D text. So a merge allows you to basically combine multiple nodes into one, which is important because you can only have one input for the render 3D. Uh, but you can have many inputs for a merge 3D. So if I want to add a shape to this 3D composition, I can click on Shape 3D with Merge 3D selected, and uh, that will add in a shape node. So we can see on the final media out now that there's a what looks like a box, but really that's just a flat plane at the moment. And both the 3D text and the shape now make it to the final media output. At this point, what we might want to do is take the 3D merge node and have that show in the left view instead of text 3D. So if we click on the left view button there, uh, now we'll be able to see both the 3D title and the plane in 3D space. In the 3D viewer, we can move around in 3D space. If you hold down Alt and then use the middle mouse button pressing down on that, you can rotate around and see everything in the 3D view space. If you just press down middle mouse button without uh, holding Alt down, then you can pan the view, basically going up, down, left, and right with the camera there. 
And if we left click on the individual objects in this 3D space, you'll be able to select and edit them individually. Notice that whenever you select it in the 3D space viewer, that it also selects it in the nodes down below and also opens up the inspector on the right so that you can edit individual settings. So one way that you can actually adjust the settings, such as the position of these 3D objects, is to simply select them. And then in the 3D space viewer, you can click on these arrows in order to adjust their position. So if I click on the blue arrow here for Z position, I can drag this title backwards. It means that in terms of 3D space, the title is now behind the shape object. Uh, likewise, we could take the shape object and do the same thing, moving that behind the title or in front of it. So that positioning will be relevant if we want an object to hide behind another object temporarily, like we'll do in this tutorial. So uh, next, I'm going to take this 3D shape and I'm gonna go over to the inspector and change the type of shape we're dealing with here. So I'm gonna take the plane and turn it into a torus, something a little bit more interesting. It's basically a donut shape. And I'm going to rotate this so that we can see the whole of this donut torus. And I can do that over here on the third tab for the 3D shape. We can see rotation here. So I'm going to want to do a Z rotation of 90 degrees and then a Y rotation of 90 degrees and then also a X rotation of 90 degrees. So by doing that, the donut is now front facing the camera and we can see that the title is hiding behind it here. So this is one way you can basically have a 3D shape kind of mask the title behind, <coughs> behind the object. If we look closely at the final output frame, we can see that the torus is not fully covering the frame at the corner. So we might want to increase the scale as well. So I'll do that here to a point which will basically make this center hole as uh, big as we want it to be. Now with these 3D shapes, if they're just plain white, that's pretty boring. You can go over to the material tab over here and you can set diffuse color, which is the main color of a 3D object and you can set specular color as well, which will be the highlight color if you choose to add any lights to the scene. So I could also set that to red, but because there's no lights in the scene, you can't get any of that 3D lighting. Okay, so next, if we actually want to add some lighting to our scene, I'm going to first select Merge 3D as our node. So I'm going to do Add Tool, 3D, Light, and from here, we'll start with an ambient light, which will light everything up in the scene equally. And then we want to connect that to the Merge 3D as well. Now, nothing's going to change because we don't have lighting enabled currently. So to enable lighting, click on the Render 3D and check lighting here. Depending on if you need them, shadows may also be worth checking later on. So this ambient light is now controlling uh, basically all of the lighting in the final output and it's not going to look very interesting because ambient light hits everything Evenly, so I think of it more as like a starting place for the lights Just to add a little bit of lighting to everything so that everything is visible uh, Next we can click on merge 3d again right click and add in another light this time We'll do a directional light so this is a light that will light things up with a direction or an angle so if we position it above our scene and slope it down at a 45 degree angle, that'll make it look like light is coming from above, kind of like a sun. So for this to actually apply, we still need to connect it to Merge 3D. So I'm going to link that in there. And uh, what you'll notice is that once we have this light and the scene, it makes the torus look a lot more interesting because now the object is not being lit up evenly across all points on the torus. So now the torus will look a little bit more interesting because not every part of the torus is being hit with the same amount of light. So we can see the uh, parts which aren't receiving much light and the parts that are receiving a lot of light kind of in the center outer edge that's closest to the light. Now we can also move around in the 3D space and move this directional light up and then rotate it downwards towards the torus, but with an angle. And next I'm going to rotate it on the x-axis here. So by rotating it up and down on the x-axis, uh, we can control which parts of the torus receive the most light. So I'll leave it there right now with a negative 7.8 degrees. 
One other issue we might notice is that the text is very unreadable behind the torus, uh, simply because the text is too close to the torus or the text is too big. Whichever way you want to describe it, we can't read all of the text. So I can select the text 3D object and then go over to the transform tab in the inspector where we can decrease the Z value towards further and further back until the text is actually readable. I'm also going to want to zoom in on the media outputs so that it looks a little bit more to scale. And one minor issue you might be able to tell is that the text is anchored above the point where the text is positioned. If we want the text to actually position itself vertically, uh, centered on that point, then we can go over to the text tab and click on the middle vertical anchor. So this will mean that the text is actually centered vertically, which will make it easier to position it exactly where we want it, the center of the screen. Okay, so uh, one more thing that we can do with our 3D shapes and our custom titles is to go to templates in the effects library and to actually add in a shader. So with these shaders, we can take the 3D object and basically give it a skin of a material, which will be much more complicated and interesting than just having simple diffuse and specular colors. So for instance, I can take this 3D shape and I can apply something like a chrome checker plate to that object. So I drop the chrome checker plate shader into the nodes editor and I'm gonna connect it to the backside of the shape 3D. So what you will notice now happens is that the 3D torus almost turns into something like a metallic tire and the overall look of it is much more interesting. Now note that when you have these shaders added on, it will take a lot longer to render, so you may want to temporarily disable or disconnect uh, your shaders while you're just kind of playing around so that everything renders faster. But uh, in the final product, we can leave this shader on to make it look more interesting. So what we might want to do now is give the title a little bit of animation. So one thing we can kind of have it do is have the text get larger as the title clip progresses. So we can have it start at a tiny size such as zero and then have it increase to its default size of one over the first 20 frames. So with frame 20 selected over here in the preview timeline, I'm going to click on the diamond next to size to set a keyframe and I'll go to the beginning and I'll change this size to zero. So that will create another keyframe at frame zero. And the size will now increase from zero to one over those 20 frames. So we can see if I kind of scrub the timeline here that that title text actually grows bigger. So if we hit play here, uh, you'll notice that the render 3D tries to create the images for this effect. It's obviously going to take a little longer, especially because we have the the 3D material applied to the shape. So once again, you can disable that if you want things to generate a little faster here. But the idea here is once it's rendered properly, we can have a title grow in size as it pops onto the screen. We could also add another shape onto the we could also add another shape onto our composition and animate that. So with merge 3D selected, I'll add yet another shape 3D. So with this shape 3D, I'll change it into something more like a sphere. And we can go over to the translation tab to move the sphere behind the torus. So if we position it right around there, it almost looks like an eyeball. And uh, just like with the torus, we can apply another shader on top of that. So something like a marble skin could be cool. So I'll add that to the nodes editor, drag that onto the 3D shape and see how it looks there. Uh, note that when you do add the shaders to a 3D shape, that the material is now being controlled by those shaders. So if you want to change the color, you have to go over to the shaders themselves. So with this marble shader, I can change the color of the marble by changing the diffuse and the specular color on this shader. Uh, so for instance, if we want something like a blue marble, I simply need to change the color to kind of more of a blue. And we can also change the specular color, which in this case is that little reflection of light that you see in the center there. Of course, where that appears is based on where your lights are as well. And maybe to make it a little bit more reflective, I can increase the glancing strength on the object and possibly the intensity as well. Okay, so now we can take this object, uh, so go back to the Shape 3D node, 
and uh, we can animate it. So there's a few ways we could do this. I think because it's a 3D shape, it would be cool if it was rotating. So I'm going to go to frame zero and we'll set keyframes for the XYZ rotations, clicking on those diamonds so that they turn red. And then at frame 120, we're going to want it to have rotated two or three times. So increments of 360 degrees. So you could do 360, 720, or 1080 for three revolutions. And we can hit play to kind of see how that's rotating. So, so if we rotate it on the z-axis, it's rotating counterclockwise. And then we could also have this marble move out of the way after the first 20 frames or so of the animation and come back on to cover it up at the end of the title animation. So with the 3D shape selected, in order to make it move off screen, I'm going to go to frame 0 and 120 and set X translation with a keyframe. But that's actually uh, frame 124 in this composition. By the way, the number of frames, if you want to increase or decrease that, you can go over to the edit tab and increase the length of your fusion composition if you need a longer title. So anyway, we have those keyframes set. So now I'm going to go to frame 20 where I want it to be moved out of the way. And I'm going to translate it something like negative, looks like maybe two or negative three units in the 3D space to make sure it's out of the way when this title starts. Next, I'm going to go to frame 100 and I'm going to set the value to the same X position. So negative three there. And uh, that's going to mean that over these 80 frames, it's not going to move at all. It's just going to be rotating there in 3D space. But at the last 20 or 24 frames, I want it to move again. So I'm going to make sure that at frame 124 that it has its X position of zero so that it's once again covering the title. So for right now, I'll remove the shaders by double clicking on the line and I'll hit play to see how this animation looks more or less. To frame zero, hit play and see how the animation is going to kind of look for us. Uh, as it's still rendering some of the frames, it may be kind of slow here. So I know that from um, 20 to 100, it's not really doing anything. So I'll just jump up there in the timeline and continue rendering those frames. And the sphere should come back on hiding the title. We may want the title to do something else like um, zoom out or decrease its size at the end there so that it's animating as well. But this is kind of what it looks like right now. So let's actually take the 3D title and at frame 100, we'll have it start decreasing its size. So at frame 100, we want it to be full size. And then at frame 120, let's make it zero. So that'll make it animate from full size to no size or completely invisible over those 20 frames. And now I think we can add these shaders back on. And take a look at how it looks. Note that when your animation is actually playing back after you render your video or you completely let it pre-render all these frames in your timeline, uh, that it will play back much faster. Uh, depending on how fast your computer is, it'll take a while for the 3D renderer to actually spit out all of the frames because it actually has to render every single frame for each of the objects in the scene. Okay, so anyway, once you have a fusion composition that you are satisfied with, I imagine that you probably want to take it and reuse it at some point in the future. So what you can do is select all of your nodes here and go up to the file menu and do an export fusion composition. So anytime you want to recreate this fusion composition, you simply need to create a new blank fusion composition in your timeline and then import your old fusion composition file. It'll be a .comp file um, back into a future project. So for here, I'll create a new composition and I'll call this tutorial dragon I. And note that the file type is .composition. So now anytime I want to bring this animation over into another clip, I can simply drop a fusion composition into the timeline, go over to the fusion tab, with that new clip selected and do file import fusion composition and select it from wherever we have it saved on our computer. So we can see just like that it's been instantly recreated with all the same nodes and the same settings into our project.
So that's going to be it for this video on the basics of creating your own completely custom 3D title effects in the DaVinci Resolve Fusion Editor. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future DaVinci Resolve 16 content.